the author of the first lines in the history of MMA, and the brutal godfather of ground and pound. A professional wrestler who turned his skills into a devastating weapon and became the first UFC champion and Pride Grand Prix winner. You made no mistake, this is Mark the Hammer Coleman. At the peak of his career, this guy inspired fear in everyone who dared to go out with him in the octagon, and he inspired admiration and awe among his fans. It's time to remember how it was. Mark Coleman made his professional MMA debut in July 1996. The UFC 10 tournament was held in an eight-fight format, so Mark had to win three fights to win. However, the ambitious newcomer seemed determined to become a champion and simply destroyed two opponents on his way to the final. First, he knocked out karate fighter Modi Horenstein on the ground. Then he took on the experienced striker Gary Goodridge, quickly knocking Big Daddy down Mark first smashed him on the floor with headbutts and then continued to beat the hell out of Gary in the stand-up, eventually forcing him to surrender. In the final fight of the evening, Mark Coleman met UFC 8 champion Don Fry, but even this formidable mustachioed man could not resist Coleman's hammer-like fists. Without wasting any time, Mark took his opponents back, and in a few seconds, he was smashing his face in. After a few minutes of merciless beating, Fry, whose face already resembled a steak with blood on it, managed to escape Mark's iron grip. However, they spent only a few seconds in the stance. Coleman again scored a takedown and continued to mock the champion, demonstrating absolute dominance. Tight punches knees to the head and choke attempts. That day, Don Fry felt the full arsenal of Mark. At the 12th minute of the fight, even the referee could no longer bear to watch Fry's suffering, so he stopped the fight, giving Coleman a TKO victory. Mark became the UFC champion on his first attempt. In September of the same year, inspired by his success, Mark Coleman, who had already been nicknamed the Hammer by mixed martial arts fans, returned to the octagon at UFC 11. After defeating his first opponent, Julian Sanchez, in 45 seconds, Mark faced off against Golden Gloves winner and judo black belt Brian Johnston. Brian decided not to rush into the lion's den right away and began to cautiously pummel Mark's legs with low kicks. But Coleman quickly took control of the situation. He got a takedown and began to stifle Johnston with heavy right hands like a freshly caught fish. Brian, who no longer had the strength to defend himself, had to be rescued from the death trap by the referee. The final fight, in which Scott Ferrazzo was supposed to take on Coleman, never happened. Exhausted after the semifinal fight with Tank Abbott, Scott simply did not dare to enter the octagon with Mark. So, the Hammer automatically became the winner and confirmed his title of UFC champion. After UFC 11, Coleman challenged several famous fighters at once, including the promotion's first champion, Boyce Gracie. However, only Dan Severn agreed to join the company of a guy who had turned into the most violent MMA fighter in the world in just a few months. The Coleman vs. Severn fight was the highlight of UFC 12. At this tournament, held in February 1997 and pretentiously called Judgment Day, the fighters were divided into weight categories for the first time. So now the UFC heavyweight champion's belt was at stake. Dan, who, like Mark, had a rich wrestling background, immediately tried to take the fight to the ground, but an unsuccessful takedown almost ended in a guillotine choke. A few seconds in the stand-up, in another unsuccessful transfer attempt, which Coleman successfully blocked by taking side control several powerful strikes, and Mark managed to get a scarf hold. Dan tried his best to break free of the hold, punching Coleman's head and even pressing his fingers into his eyes, but was still forced to tap. The fight ended in less than three minutes, making Mark Coleman the first heavyweight champion in UFC history. Mark Coleman burst into the MMA world with a hurricane and won the championship belt. It became wildly popular. MMA fans admired his unique style of fighting, takedowns, followed by immediate finishing, which was nicknamed his ground and pound. However, popularity played a crucial joke on Coleman. Believing in his invincibility, he went into his first title defense completely prepared. The fight with Maurice Smith at UFC 14 instantly brought Mark down to earth. 
the kickboxer with a negative record on whom no one would have dared to bet even five bucks chased the champion around the octagon for more than 20 minutes. Ken Shamrock's trainee completely dominated the stand-up. The judges unanimously gave the victory in this fight to Smith, and Mark was forced to say goodbye to the newly won championship belt. This loss of the title was the beginning of a real black streak in Mark's life. The rematch with Smith, which was scheduled for October 1997, never took place due to Coleman's injury. A torn ACL put Mark on the bench for six months, and when he was finally able to enter the octagon, he was knocked out for the first time in his life. Pete Williams, representing Shamrock's Lion's Den team, held his own with a former champion throughout the main event, and in the extra round, he finally knocked out the already exhausted Coleman with a powerful high kick. After two consecutive defeats to Shamrock's pupils, Mark decided to go through a training camp before his next fight at Lion's Den. However, the undefeated Pedro Hizo, who had knocked out Tank Abbott in his last fight, was also too much for Mark. The hammer completely controlled the Brazilian on the ground, but his punch was still lame, as evidenced by the huge bruises from Hizo's lungs. In the extra round, Pedro fed Mark with his heavy punches, blocking all his attempts to take the fight to the crowd. As a result, most of the judges sided with the Brazilian, and Mark had to accept his third defeat in a row. Mark was desperate. His career in the UFC was rapidly declining, as were his fight feats. Coleman had just given birth to two daughters, so he needed money more than ever. Mark decided to try his hand at the most popular Japanese promotion, Pride, which at the time paid much more than UFC. He had his first Pride fight in April 1999 against Nobuhiko Takata, a favorite of the Japanese public. Everyone who knew anything about MMA realized that Takata had no chance against the American giant. However, the end of the fight shocked the audience. At first, nothing boded well for the fight. Molad scored a takedown in his own style and went to ground and pound. He dominated the ground throughout the first round, and a few seconds before the bell almost finished Takata with an Americana. However, in the second round, Coleman seemed to be switched. He completely gave the initiative to the Japanese fighter, and in a minute was already banging on the canvas, capitulating after a successful heel hook. Mark never admitted to losing on purpose. He only hinted that at the time, he needed a job more than anything else. And pride had its own conditions. Apparently, Coleman fulfilled these conditions, because after the defeat of Takata, he immediately received a contract for the next fight. Apart from Takata's defeat, Mark Coleman's start at pride was quite successful. In October 1999, at pride 8, he took on Ricardo Moraes. The debonair Brazilian, nicknamed the Mutant, had good striking technique, but was completely unable to block takedowns. So Mark dominated his opponent on the ground for almost the entire allotted time and easily won a unanimous decision. In 2000, the Hammer continued to conquer the Pride ring. In January, he took part in the qualifying round of the Pride FC Openweight Grand Prix, where he defeated kickboxer Masaki Sataki in just a minute, working on it with a rather unusual painful can opener. The main event of the Grand Prix, which took place in May of that year, was Mark's finest hour. In the quarterfinals, he completely smashed Akira Soji, turning the Japanese fighter's body into a solid hematoma. Coleman won this by unanimous decision. In the semifinals, Mark was supposed to meet Kazuyuki Fujita. However, Fujita had injured his knee in the previous fight with Mike Kerr, and in the first seconds of the fight, his corner threw in the towel. So Coleman immediately slipped into the final, where Igor Vovchanchin was already waiting for him. In the fight with the Ukrainian kickboxer, Mark did not change his habits. He immediately scored a takedown and spent the entire first round practicing his hammer fists on the opponent. once even trying to finish Igor with a Kimura. Coleman also started the second period with a takedown, but in the third minute, he decided to diversify his ground and pound. He took a north-south stance and started throwing knees right into Vovchanchin's head. The Ukrainian could not withstand such a brutal finish. Thus, Mark Coleman became the champion of the second top MMA promotion in the world.
the championship only added to Mark's motivation. In his next fight, he won a quick victory over Brazilian jiu-jitsu champion Alan Goes. The classic scheme worked perfectly. A takedown, a few powerful punches and knees to the head, and the opponent was already begging for mercy. However, Mark was not so lucky in his next fight. At Pride 16, he fought one of the biggest representatives of a new generation of MMA fighters, Antonio Rodrigo Nogueira. Minotaro immediately put his fist to work and fed Mark with hard knees from the clinch. But when Nogueira found himself on the canvas after an unsuccessful Haikiku, Coleman finally felt in his element. Unfortunately for Coleman, his signature ground and pound didn't throw the Brazilian off balance. He tirelessly searched for pain, and in the sixth minute, he finally applied an armbar. This defeat interrupted Mark's two-year winning streak and forced him to take an almost long break of his career. The next time Coleman appeared in the ring was in June 2003. At Pride 26, he met his old rival, Don Fry, whom he defeated by knockout at the dawn of his career. From the very first seconds of the fight, it became clear that Don Fry had been preparing for this fight for seven years. He blocks Goldman's first attempt to get to his feet and even manages to add a powerful knee to the head. However, Mark doesn't like to stay in debt. Soon he manages to confuse Don with a powerful left hook and scores a takedown. Once in his element, Coleman finally puts his fist to work and didn't let Fry go until the end of the round. In the second round, Molot also took a while to put the burly mustachioed man down, but when he finally did, he went all out. Mark duplicated the final episode of the fight with both champion. He took a north-south position and began to plant hard knees right into his opponent's head. Fry's last hopes for revenge were dashed in the third round, which he also spent on the canvas, trying to survive Mark's hammering blows. After the three-round destruction, the result was obvious, a unanimous victory for Coleman. After the victory over Don Fry, Mark's luck once again turned away from him. His age also had an effect, as Coleman was already almost 40, and he was increasingly facing much younger fighters. In April 2004, Mark dropped out of the Pride Heavyweight Grand Prix at the qualifying stage, losing to Fedor Emelianenko. Despite the fact that Mark immediately passed his opponent and even managed to take side control, The Last Emperor quickly found a way out of the seemingly hopeless situation and finished Coleman with an armbar in the third minute. This defeat came as a real shock to Mark. Leaving the ring, he furiously waved his fists and smashed everything in his path. It took Mark Coleman almost a year to recover, but when he finally showed up at Pride 29 in February 2005, he received another dose of disappointment, losing to Mirko Krokop. The Croatian's perfect striking technique left Mark no chance. Molot failed to move his opponent, and in the fourth minute of the fight, he was on the canvas after a devastating series of lefts. It was the second knockout loss in Coleman's career. Mark later admitted that he had only two weeks to prepare for the fight with Krokop, but even though he felt like he was selling his soul to the devil, he signed the contract anyway because of the number of zeros in the fee. In October 2005, Mark finally managed to break his losing streak. He took part in the Bushido Europe Tournament in Rotterdam, where he defeated local fighter Milko Vorn in less than a minute, applying an arm triangle choke to perfection. A few months later, Coleman returned to the Pride Ring to meet the promotion's undefeated champion, Mauricio Hua. This fight was a new challenge for Mark. For the fight with a famous Brazilian, he moved down to light heavyweight for the first time in his career. However, MMA fans will remember this evening not for the spectacular fight. Already in the first minute of the fight, due to an unfortunate fall after a takedown by Mark, Mauricio suffered a severe fracture of his arm. Coleman didn't seem to notice and tried to finish off his opponent. And when the referee began to drive him away from the injured Hua, the hammer seemed to go crazy. In no time, almost the entire Brazilian team, led by Murillo Hua, was in the ring. Phil Baroni and even Coleman Sr. immediately came to Mark's aid. As a result, the fight turned into a street brawl between the shootbox and Hammer House teams. The Japanese promotion tried to hide this scandal and cut the fight from the broadcast. However, numerous videos of viewers who were delighted with this spectacle were still posted online. After the fight, Mark realized that he had overreacted and tried to apologize to the Brazilians, but to no avail. They only wanted a rematch, but they had to wait much longer than who his team expected. 
In October 2006, Mark suffered a devastating defeat in a fight he had high hopes for. The rematch with Fedor Emelianenko went completely wrong. The Russian heavyweight smashed Coleman in the stand-up throughout the first round, blocking every attempt to get a takedown and unleash his signature ground and pound. At the end of the round, the ex-champion's face resembled a bloody mask. And at the beginning of the second segment, Fedor allowed Mark to drag him to the ground and finished him with an armbar for the second time. Mark Coleman's career was coming to an end, and his last fight with Fedor, in which the hammer turned into a whipping boy, clearly demonstrated this. So, when Mark disappeared from the promotion's radar for almost two years, the MMA community was not expecting him to return. But when Coleman was introduced into the UFC Hall of Fame in March 2008, he seemed to get another boost of motivation. In January 2009, for the first time in 10 years, Mark stepped into the UFC octagon to fight a long-awaited rematch with Mauricio Hua. Mark had been training hard for this fight, but no miracle happened. Mauricio, 17 years younger and at the very peak of his form, did whatever he wanted with Mark for all three rounds. Hua pressed Coleman against the cage and threw punch after punch, mixing heavy hooks with low kicks and occasionally adding knees from the clinch. After being knocked down several times, Coleman was knocked to the canvas for the last time in the third round after a crushing right uppercut from Hua. After the defeat by Hua, Mark, contrary to the expectations of MMA fans, appeared at the UFC 100th anniversary event. Defeating Stefan Bonaire by unanimous decision, it was the last victory of the great Mark Coleman. The first UFC heavyweight champion had his last fight at UFC 109. He entered the octagon against another promotion veteran, Randy Couture. However, Mark was inferior to his opponent, both in the stand-up and on the ground, and lost in the second round by rear naked choke. Subscribe to our channel and enjoy the best episodes from the world of mixed martial arts. Also, don't forget to like and comment. Help us make our content even better. We'll see you in the next video.